In this lesson, I'm going to talk about polar coordinates. I'm going to introduce the polar plane and talk about converting uh, points in the plane from the rectangular coordinates to the polar coordinates. And I'm going to do some examples of basic graphs in polar coordinates. Mm -hmm. Let's suppose that you were going to use calculus to calculate the area of this quarter circle. Um, the equation of this uh, circle is x squared plus y squared equals 1. And if you were going to use an integral to calculate this area, just the area of this quarter circle, then you'd need to know the height. So you'd have to solve this equation for y. So you'd end up with, since I'm only looking at positive y's, you'd end up the square root of 1 minus x squared. So then if you were going to calculate this area, it would be the integral from 0 to 1 of the square root of 1 minus x squared dx. Um, and the students coming out of Calculus 2 know that this is not a fun integral to calculate. Uh, you have to use trig sub. So uh, basically the takeaway here is if you're an engineer and you're engineering things and you put circle shape objects in your uh, design, then you are by default creating integrals that are difficult to calculate. You yourself are engineering hard to calculate areas. Um, so there's a mathematical way out of this. This is what polar coordinates are here to do. Um, we're just going to use this alternative coordinate system and it's going to make calculating areas and volumes and masses of things that are built out of circles much easier. This is the polar plane. Uh, if you give me a radius and an angle, then I can use the polar plane to describe the location of a point. For example, let's just plot some basic points. So let's plot here, say for instance, um, five comma pi over four. Um, okay, so what I need to do is open out an angle to pi over four. So this right here is the angle pi over four. And then I need to go out five uh, units of the radius here. So here's one, two, three, four, five. So this is it right here. That right there is the point five comma pi over four. Okay, so one thing you'll notice immediately is that uh, unlike rectangular coordinates, polar coordinates are not unique. Uh, one thing that I could do is I could go around another full revolution and then uh, pi over 4, um, so pi over 4 plus 2 pi, and that would give me the same location. So that's one thing to keep in mind about polar coordinates is um, that it's n that's not the only way that you can get there. They're not unique. Um, uh, the same location can be described in more than one way. Also, uh, just to be clear, I want to explain what it means when you plot negative 5 comma pi over 4. So what that means is you still open the same angle pi over 4, but then instead of going away from the origin out along that line, what you do is you go the opposite direction, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So over here is the point negative 5 comma pi over 4. Um, so I could also get to this location by just going out, out the angle that you want and then 180 degrees and then going in the opposite direction. So, you know, there's a few little subtleties about this, but generally it's pretty easy to uh, wrap your mind around how you describe the location of a point um, using the polar grid. Okay, so how do you go back and forth between uh, polar coordinates and rectangular coordinates? So let's imagine that we were at some place, let's say we were right there. Um, then what that means is this distance is r from the origin out to the point, and this angle right here is theta. So you can just drop these pieces of the right triangle. So I'm going to put x there and y there. Um, and now from SOHCAHTOA, or right triangle trigonometry, you can see that x is equal to r cosine theta, y is equal to r sine theta. And then from the Pythagorean theorem, it's also pretty easy to see that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. There's one more that I like to use. Sometimes it helps us when we're calculating an angle and we know, like if you're converting from rectangular to polar, 
um, I like to use arc tangent. Um, so I can also observe that the tangent of theta is equal to soka toa, the opposite over the adjacent. So tangent is going to be y over x. I think the easy way is to go from rectangular to polar. So um, let's do the easy one first. Here I give us coordinates. So this is an r and that's a theta. And we're asked to convert this to rectangular. So I can just use these formulas there. So x is going to be 10 times the cosine of 5 pi over 3. And y is going to be 10 times the sine of 5 pi over 3. So from the unit circle, I know that the cosine of 5 pi over 3 is 1 half, and the sine of 5 pi over 3 is negative square root of 3 over 2. Um, so in rectangular coordinates, I get 5 comma negative 5 square root of 3, uh, or is the x, y coordinates of this polar point. OK, so uh, now let's convert a rectangular coordinate into a polar coordinate. Um, so here I've given us a x, y, and we're asked to come up with an r and a theta. So the r is actually kind of the easy one. So uh, x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So this means negative 2 squared plus 2 square root of 3 squared is equal to r squared. So 4 plus, now this is 4 times 3, that's going to be 12, is equal to r squared. So this means that 16 is equal to r squared. So r could either be plus or minus 4. And we're going to have to make a choice uh, about which theta that we choose. So given a choice, I like to just choose the positive r value. That just makes it a little bit easier. There is more than one correct answer to this problem. Um, OK, so now let's come up with what the theta is. So the first thing I like to do is just work out what quadrant that I'm in. Um, so in rectangular coordinates, I'm going to need to go left 2 and then up 2 square root of 3s. So that means this is the point that I'm looking at right there. That's the theta. OK, so uh, I'm in quadrant 2. All right, now uh, the tangent of theta is equal to y over x. So the tangent of theta is going to be 2 square root of 3 over negative 2. So the tangent of theta here is going to be negative the square root of 3. So if you're good with the unit circle, you can see pretty quickly that this means that theta is equal to 2 pi over 3. I know that not everybody has the unit circle at their fingertips at all times. So I just want to show you kind of a calculator hack um, that you can use to uh, get this coordinate or get this value of theta. Um, OK, so first of all, I'm going to put my uh, calculator into degree mode. It's a little bit easier um, sometimes to work in degrees. And then what I'm going to do is ask the calculator to find the tangent inverse of negative the square root of 3. And that gives me negative 60 degrees. So I know that whatever the reference angle for theta is, it is a 60 degree type angle or a pi over 3 type. So from the calculator, we know that it is a 60 degree or a pi over 3 type angle. So now all I need to do is use the unit circle to figure out which uh, is the pi over 3 type angle that is in quadrant 2. Um, so if you just look at the unit circle, the way it goes is pi over 6, pi over 3, pi over 2. Uh, then the next one will be 2 pi over 3. So this right here is 2 pi over 3. That's the pi over 3 type angle that is in quadrant 2. So that's another way that you could come up with the theta. Just a few basic examples here. Some 
graphs are so easy and polar, you don't even need to really think or use definitely not use a calculator in order to get the answer. Um, so the first thing is if they just give you r equals a number, then that means that um, it's going to be a circle and the radius of the circle is going to be six. I mean, that's what polar is here to do. Um, so if they gave you, for example, r is less than or equal to six, then you would shade everything inside the circle. Um, and then if they gave you r is bigger than or equal to six, then you would shade everything outside the circle, right? These are the points that I'm shading right here whose radius is greater than six, the ones that are outside the circle. Uh, and then the last thing is if you, uh, if they give you a uh, inequality that doesn't include the or equal to, like r is just less than six, then what you do is you uh, graph it with a dotted line or a dashed line. And then since this one is, the r is less than six, I wanna include all the points on the interior. So uh, polar coordinates are really good for graphing circles. Um, and then the other one is um, if they just give you theta, like for example, theta is equal to pi over six, um, then that's just a line through the origin. This means theta is equal to pi over six for any value of r because they're not specifying an r. So you just draw that pi over six line and you can see there is a value for r that lives on the pi over six line and there's another value for r and there's another value for r. So all these values for r uh, are on that line there. So there's a few basic ones, um, but not all of them are so basic and obvious that um, you you could just do them using your brain. So let's look at a few uh, ways that calculators can help us graph uh, polar equations. So the first thing is you can graph polar equations using your graphing calculator. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the mode. I'm gonna go here on mode. I'm gonna make sure that I'm in radians and then uh, I'm gonna go over to the polar mode right there uh, and that'll let me graph this polar equation. So now when you push the y equals button, it's not gonna give you y equals as a choice, it's gonna give you r equals as a choice. So I'll put in here two plus three cosine and now the button that you're used to pressing for x, now when you push that, that is gonna give you a theta. So when we look at this graph, it's actually gonna be just a little bit misleading because the calculator graphs, uh, everything kind of stretched out because the calculator is putting 10 hash marks on the horizontal window and the vertical window, but the window is not square. Um, so one thing that I like to do is go into zoom and then go down to zoom square and that gives me a little bit better picture of what's going on. Um, this still feels like the graph is a little bit too small, so let's try zooming in and see what that does. That makes it a little bit too zoomed in, so I'm gonna have to go back into the window. Um, you can see you can adjust the range for thetas. Um, now for my x min and my x max, maybe let's go from negative six to positive six. And then for my y min and y max, I'll also do negatives. Oh, it's not gonna be zoom square now. God, there is just no good way to do this. So what happens if I push zoom square now? Okay, did pretty good, did pretty good. All right, so that's it. We get this kind of picture that looks like this. Okay, sort of a, a loop with another little loop in it. So let's do our best to draw that. Boom, I'm giving myself an A plus for that art. Okay, there we've done it. Um, you can see how cumbersome the graphing calculator is for graphing polar equations just because of the zooming and stuff. Um, so I advise you to get really used to graphing things using Desmos so that you can be fast at interpreting um, the graphs that you're looking at from your calculator. Many of the basic graphing problems in Polar have you use some variation of A plus B cosine theta or A plus B sine theta. 
Um, so I've just had Desmos make one um, where our A and B can be sliders so we can kind of see the effect that um, moving A and B around has on this kind of shape. So you can see here as I increase the A, that's kind of like the number that's by itself. So um, that just kind of makes the sort of outside radius of this shape get bigger. You can see that this, uh, this bump right here kind of gets smoothed out. It sort of starts to make a kind of kidney bean sort of shape as the A gets bigger. Um, and then if you make the B bigger, then that should shrink the whole thing down and you can see then it kind of, that's where you get this kind of loop on the inside like that. Um, so it's kind of interesting. I said shrink it down. It, it sort of pushes it off to the right. It's kind of hard to describe in words the effect that this has. So I encourage you to just make this um, formula in Desmos and kind of play around with these sliders. One thing that I'll note is if you change it to sign, then now it's oriented up and down. Um, and when you push the things down into negative, it's kind of neat what happens as it goes, as that A value goes to zero, then the two loops kind of sit on top of each other. Uh, and then, um, then it, like what happens? Whoa, that is crazy. Okay, so my advice is to just kind of make this and sort of push these sliders around. It's sort of neat what happens. Okay, so the B, controlling the B is gonna make it go out on the other side. So when the B gets negative, it's gonna go in the negative direction. Um, neat, so these, these, this is kind of fun um, if you wanna just take a few minutes to make this yourself and uh, push the sliders around. There's a graph that comes up a lot in Calc 3 that is uh, circles that have been kind of shifted around. So I have here a circle that has been shifted up on the Y axis three units. And then the radius is also three. Um, so this is the graph that we're looking at, kind of a circle right here. And this comes up a lot. So I'm just gonna take a minute to convert this um, equation into polar so we can see what they look like. The, the pattern is pretty transparent here. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna start by foiling this out. So x squared plus y squared minus six y uh, plus nine is equal to nine. So now um, uh, those nines are gonna cancel. So here I have x squared plus y squared minus six y is equal to zero. And now it's pretty easy to convert this into polar. So x squared plus y squared is r squared and y is r sine theta. So what this means is I have uh, r squared is equal to six r sine theta. I lost my equals zero here. Um, okay, so there's two choices for this. Either r is equal to zero or r is equal to six sine theta. Um, and you can see that r is equal to zero is included in this equation. So um, let's just have a look here. I started off with a circle that has been shifted up three units and has a radius of three. And then they ended up with a six right here. Um, I'm gonna do one more example of this. I'm gonna show you the graph of uh, r is equal to 10 cosine theta. And then I think the pattern will become really clear. This graph is a circle. And now since I chose cosine instead of sine, it's gonna sit on the x axis. One thing that's just kind of easy to remember, this is just loosely speaking, is in general, cosines go with X type objects and sines go with Y type objects. Now in this one, the uh, constant here in front of the sign was six and the radius was nine. And that pattern is true. Uh, this constant right here is 10. So that means this whole distance is 10. So the diameter is 10. So actually the radius of this circle is five there. Um, and just to be clear, if I would have done r is equal to negative 10 cosine theta, then I would have ended up with a circle that goes down the negative x-axis. 
So there's kind of only so much that I can teach you about this uh, and some of it that needs to come from your exploration. So get your graphing calculator out or head over there to Desmos and just kind of enjoy uh, plugging some functions in uh, to the polar graphs and, and see what kind of interesting pictures you can produce.